Hey there, geeks. Adam coming at you with another edition of Comic Card Crazy. And uh, boy, has it been a sojourn the last few months as we've opened up seven packs. Yes, seven packs of these Image Comics trading cards. One from each of the founders, you know, launch titles. Uh, it's been a journey, honestly, for me. I feel like I've learned so much about what they were doing and how they were promoting and some of the stuff I'd forgotten from the very early days, the plans there. This time around, though, to close things out, there is a pack of cards that brought all of the Image Founders together. These were by Tops. They were called Image Universe cards. So we will explore this pack of cards in just a minute because it's talking specifically about the founders. Uh, but the founders themselves did get together several times over the years. I mean, there was an Image Zero issue that some of you might have had. I believe this is, is this the one that you had to collect all the certificates uh, out of the various issues and then mail them in and then you got the Zero issue? Uh, there was a little parody in Splitting Image. I think this is a two or three three-part series where it kind of made fun of all the different uh, founders. Uh, Image United was a series they did years later where they came back together. So still need to get all the issues of that and find out how that story worked out. Uh, but of course, for our purposes, with Wizard Magazine, there was this Comic-Con multi-panel. I mean, pull this out here. Whoa, yeah. So, uh, they've, they've done some mashups together. Uh, this pack of cards, I guess, should be no different. Uh, it's really interesting, though, to see in this day and age where all the founders have ended up. Uh, there are various degrees of regular publishing or other avenues where they've taken their artistry and their, uh, their abilities. So, anyway, let's get into, though, this pack of cards from this moment in time where they were still united as a force and see what's in there. Okay, so here we are with our pack of Top's Finest Image Universe Founder Series Chromium High Tech Cards. That is a mouthful. They have a lot to offer here. Uh, the thing I'm curious about this is they don't tell you how many cards are inside. They're not promoting it that way, but it's Image Universe, which tells me, you know, there's some potential for mashups or something here. So let's check out what they have going on. Okay, so... Look for Top's Clear Zone, Clear Chrome Chase cards. So we have that. And then what's on this side here? Oh, so Todd Toys. So was Todd officially... Oh, th this is just to give you the rights for all the possible uh, McFarlane action figures that are going to show up? Or is this just a promotional piece? I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I have zero concept of what could be in here. Is it original art? Is it pictures and bios? Is it sketches, behind the scenes stuff? So let's get into this here. This is going to be really interesting. Okay, so we got a nice chrome package at least. Okay. All right, let's see what we got in here. Okay, so look at this. Oh my goodness. Eric Larson made to look like he's punching the dragon. That is awesome. And look, he's, I guess, transforming? Why is he turning partially green? But man, that looks cool. I, I had not imagined that. Look at those glasses just <laughs> light up with the chrome. Okay, let's see what this is about there. What's this going to tell us? Okay, continuity can get to be a noose. When Spider-Man has fought a particular villain 40 times or so, if you keep referring to those old stories again and again, it lessens the villain and the conflict. A villain who says, Spider-Man, you've beat me 40 times before, this time I'll get you. That doesn't seem likely. If the writer ignores the previous encounters or glosses over it, it can be exciting to the reader. He doesn't have to be notified that this character has fought the hero millions of times. Ha! Huh. So you just kind of get the philosophy of the different characters. Okay, so that was a great one to start with. Oh, looks like we're going with a little bit more Eric Larson here because we got Super Patriot. Okay, let's see what this one's about. 
Super Patriot Johnny Armstrong has fought for a better America since the 1940s. Not long ago, super freaks from Chicago's vicious crime circle tore away his face and destroyed his limbs, nearly killing the hero. Cyber Data rebuilt him into the ultimate killing machine, and now his limbs can transform into a vast array of deadly weapons. His maturity and experience make him an ideal addition to the Freak Force team. When a strange leech is attached to his neck, he is forced to hunt down the dragon. Like, that just took a turn all of a sudden. It's like, bio, bio... He's got a leech attached to his neck, and now he's some type of, <laughs> some strange, uh, you know, automaton. Wow, but okay, so it looks like that's the dragon's feet right there, and then there's that nurse who I think turns into a uh, superhero, Mighty Man, right? So, all right, now let's see if we get to another creator. All right, so this looks like, is it Riptide? What's the name of this character? Let's see. Yep, Riptide. Okay, so we got some young blood going on here now. Oh, now this is fascinating. I never noticed this before. Look, just go all the way down to her real name there. And this is Leanna Creel. So, Todd, or Todd, Rob Liefeld named this character after his sister-in-law. Leanna Creel is the actress who played Tori on Saved by the Bell, who is one of his... Uh, wife's uh, two triplet sisters that is fascinating i had no idea okay the victim of an underwater accident that should have left her dead professional deep sea diver leanna creel was granted extra extraordinary powers by the mysterious sea witch now as a member of team youngblood riptide has the ability to draw moisture from the air around her and manipulate it to create tidal waves geysers and water spouts so this was art by jason pearson obviously not uh, rob liefeld art here but still, that's kind of fascinating. And first appearance was Megaton Explosion number one? Is that the first appearance of Youngblood? Am I missing that somehow? Huh. And I wonder if that was updated somehow for the Team Youngblood book when he was kind of revamping things. All right, now we get into some Jim Valentino with a pretty intense Shadowhawk close-up there. Let's see what's going on with this one. Okay. Shadowhawk and his identity. Shadowhawk's identity is a mystery. Only Christina Reed and Carlton Sub are privy to the fact that former district attorney Paul Johnstone has become the bone-breaking vigilante for justice. But it took the serial killer Hawk Shadow, a twisted alter ego of Shadowhawk, to reveal himself. Hawk Shadow is a cruel, cunning racist who wages a one-man war to eliminate minorities. He targets minorities and murders them without remorse. Shadowhawk spends countless hours tracking the killer, Hawk Shadow. Thinking that he had an ally in his fight to clean up New York City, he was shocked when Shadowhawk removed his helmet to reveal himself as a black man. I have that issue. We shared it actually during the Shadowhawk cards video. Uh, but yeah, some very intense issues we were dealing with in the pages of Shadowhawk. Now look at this. What in the world? We got a guy who looks like, is he a ghost? Is he a mutant? Is he a, I don't, he looks like Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. So he's tripping somebody. What is this? Let's find out. And why is Shadowhawk there? Ace, the kid from outer space. <laughs> Take a hooky playing boy from the planet Rasmataz, who can turn invisible and fly and put him on Earth. The boy meets a young lonely girl named Ashley, who has just moved into a new town and is tormented by Brick, the school bully. What do you have? Trouble with a capital T. Ace is a mischievous prankster whose antics get poor Ashley, the only earthling who the only earthling who can see him in hot water. Ace, the kid from outer space, is a new series coming in 1995, created by Jim Valentino as part of the lighter image line of comics for kids of all ages. This card is his first appearance. Okay, so did this lighter image thing happen? Is there an issue of? <laughs> The kid from outer space somewhere, because, man, I mean, it's obviously in the style of, you know, the old school comics, but man, fascinating. I had no idea. All right, finally, back into the world of young blood with Chapel. Again, no Liefeld art here. Who's drawn this one? David Williams? Okay. Deeply, trouble, uh, deeply troubled over his HIV-positive status, Special Agent Bruce Stinson recently chose to end his own life and risk his fate in the afterlife. Where Chapel's soul went... Oh, where Chapel's soul went is unknown. He began his career in the elite CIA death squad operation Night Strike. While a member, Chapel was injected with the strain of the HIV virus and 
a test to control agents. He was a founding member of Youngblood, but was forced out to lead Bloodstrike until the original team was wiped out. A vicious assassin and cold-blooded killer, Chapel carried a modified machine gun with 40mm grenade launcher. Okay. Huh. So at this point, he was dead. I do remember, you know, that he took his own life in that way, but... I, I want to know, did Spawn meet him somehow, like, in the afterlife, or what was going on there? Because I thought Spawn was involved in his death, but maybe that was just a battle? Anyway, what an interesting set of cards. All right, let's close this thing out. Wow, so, man, it was just kind of a mishmash of stuff, right? There wasn't, I mean... I guess it, it taught me a lot. I mean, there didn't seem to be like a central theme. It was just kind of like, well, what do you guys want to do? You're the image founders. Just what are you promoting right now? And we'll put it in a card set and we'll make them chromium just for <laughs> extra oomph, right? Uh, but there was some creativity in there when it came to this Eric Larson card. I mean, punching his own character through a wall and just, I love that. Like that brings excitement I, I don't know if this is like one of the chase cards or not because it has a different like numbering back there but still like that's definitely my pick for the coolest card in there you know as i was thinking about uh image mashups I and mean, they did a lot of crossovers and stuff over the years but this was another one i forgot about which was shattered image which i've picked up and i'll be curious to you know report on that on the podcast sometime in the future but speaking of the future you might be wondering what is to come what is going on next if we're all done with image well you know we started this thing off with Marvel. Now we've done Image. I think it's only fair that we give DC its moment in the sun. So we'll be opening up a few packs of DC related trading cards going forward over the next few weeks. Uh, but if you want a little bit more Image, I will say exclusively for our Patreon, we are going to be opening up a pack of DV8 trading cards. Of course, this was a spinoff from Gen 13. Uh, so for those of you who are curious to uh, see what those are all about, and uh, you want a whole lot of other perks like early release uncut episodes scans of wizard magazine how about you know a bonus podcast 90 super cinema talking about superhero movies uh, all these things and more uh, are there to be had on w uh, Patreon, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Patreon.com forward slash Wizards Comics. Just five bucks a month. You're contributing to the podcast so we can buy cool stuff like these trading cards for videos. Uh, but also you get a lot uh, for your money. Any patron will tell you. Numbers continue to grow over there. So, hey, join the club. But in the meantime, stay subscribed here to Wizards, the podcast guide to comics on YouTube. Of course, there are also uh, haul videos. There are interviews. There are other things that you can find here to enjoy but we'll be back soon so until next time keep your books bagged and boarded